want to crunch army your motivation guy is back all right so knowing how to piece controller is like one of the most crucial skills that you can possess in fortnite i'm sure you guys already know you know from like watching pros already but it's by far like the best way to shape fights in your favor and basically if you control the bills my friends you command the fight For today's question, okay, how important do you think peace control is on a scale like from one to 10? We think it's around like an eight or nine, but you know, drop your thoughts, you know, in the comments section. You know, in a previous video, you know, we asked you this, right? What is your worst habit in Fortnite? You guys remember this? And uh, Panda answered this. He said, my mistake is when people get in my box and I get really stressed and I choke in edits. And I just want to say, man, look, we all go through it. We all been there. You know, we all have those moments where the pressure is just cooking and we kind of just, you know, stop thinking. And so, man, keep going. I'm so proud of you, man. Thanks for sharing. All right, so this first technique is an advanced ramp rush. We saw Boogadoo, and man, it is crazy. All right, so notice that the first thing Booga does when he spots his opponent being higher than him is, you know, double ramp and he attached cones. These like really far cones are critical here since they actually stop Booga's opponent from ramping up any further. After that though, Booga floors, double edits through and immediately places two perpendicular walls. These are primarily here to, to block a potential shot, but they also do a good job making it so that, you know, Booga doesn't get blocked off. Then Booga edits through the wall, and because he thinks his opponent is gonna be on the right, he walls in that direction. I mean, you can see him trying to edit through in an attempt to box in his opponent, but somehow they actually ended up right on top of Booga. So instead, he just boxes where he's at, and his opponent is completely stunned, and Booga picks up the limb. Ooh, that was easy. Obviously, I mean, this is a ridiculously advanced technique. Like, if it's too advanced, don't worry. We got some really straightforward ones coming up. But if you could just pull this one off, guys, like this is like one of the most comprehensive peace control techniques that you could ever use in a ramp rush, all right? All right, next, let's take a look at a really slick combination of techniques that, you know, you can use to just safely box in players, taking your wall, you know, from just an up and coming player named Seven. So Seven is, is he's in his box, right? And his opponent is attempting to take his wall. We've all been there, <laughs> but how does Seven play this out? He quickly double edits on the top, and then since a lot of players are gonna block you with the wall when they see you just ramping out the top, Seven places his own and he just edits through. Wow. Now, if your opponent doesn't try to wall, they'll probably just try to just shoot you instead. I mean, like, why wouldn't they? So Seven does the smart thing and he just instantly places a floor and ramp, which also provides him an excellent peace control opportunity, by the way. Seven can just edit through both and place walls to box in his opponent. So I know he missed the wall and, you know, he one pumps his opponent anyway, but the technique is still very solid, I gotta say. And it's perhaps even more solid in season five since the pump's gone and, you know, the tax takes longer to kill. So you wanna have your opponent boxed up and any case though, like this is a very beneficial technique to learn, my friends. Anyways, all right, keeping with the topic of boxing in opponents, let's next look at the importance of high walls and how useful they are for combating players above. You guys ready? Here we go, all right. So in this example, we find peace control legend Reet battling it out right now and his opponent's a layer up. So Reet goes to side jump, but instead of just a traditional one, he leaps and he aims his crosshair up to a place, you know, where he can put a high wall in front of his opponent. And look at this, man. Since the wall blocks them off, the enemy just goes up a layer and the high wall gives Reet access to exactly where he needs. Reet then goes to box them, but it doesn't matter because this guy's like, He's kind of a fool. And he didn't notice the wall wasn't even his. Either way, Reed earns himself a quick, straightforward limb thanks to the high wall. High walls are actually, you know, so underused, man. Like, it's crazy. And it's a shame because they work so good. Like, not only are you placing the wall earlier than, you know, if you didn't, you know, do a high wall, but players usually won't even have vision of you. So it tends to do just a great job just catching them off guard. So guys, try to start using them more often than not, like in build battles where you're fighting for height because it's definitely gonna give you guys way more opportunities for peace control. Now, you know, ever since RPG returned in season five, all right, taking builds has never been easier. 
All right, looking at Unknown here, and I mean like right here, he has an RPG and his opponent is boxed up below him. Rather than just firing at the base, Unknown aims at the top of the box and he gets ready to replace a wall. He follows up with a quick edit into a cone and even more walls to just to box them in, which gets him to kill before this guy can shockwave to safety. All right, check this out. The RPG is just so useful for taking walls. You know, many of us don't realize, you know, this, and, and we tend to just spam our rockets, but instead of just wasting them, use them to take your opponent's walls, all right? Or even their cone and floor from above, as long as you have another platform to stand on. The RPG's ability to take pieces is almost like above all the other weapons. It's actually kind of busted, to be honest. So I guess it's a good thing that the RPG is really rare this season. All right, guys, so sticking with Unknown, here's another advantageous move that you can learn from him. Check this out, the cone from below. Basically, Unknown's in this build battle, right? And he gets underneath his opponent when he spots a perfect opportunity to cone their floor. And you can actually see it just mess them up really hard here. So they try to ramp, but they just can't because of the cone, which leaves them stuck like glue. And Unknown's really quick to capitalize on that. He edits the wall and he boxes them in entirely, which allows him to get some pretty significant damage on this guy who probably wouldn't have just kept building into the next year. Unknown takes a few more seconds just to finish the kill, but the cone from below definitely helped him out a ton here. Okay, so they're super simple, they're speedy, and can even be placed on the same layer through your opponent's wall. As long as you can just position your crosshair right, you'll be good. So definitely start using them more often, guys, whenever you see the opening, all right? Okay, next up, we're gonna be looking at some simple peace control moves. Here we go. I say simple, but you know, we'll also look at some advanced you know, implementations as well. First one being the wall take into cone. Here we go. If there's one technique aspiring comp players need to start using, it's this one. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how guys like Benji Fishy go around like finishing kills so insanely fast in low point lobbies, a lot of it has to do with the fact that he cones pretty much every box after he takes their wall. So the cone prevents enemies from ramping for protection, right? And it even stops them from just editing down in most cases. Essentially, it leaves them trapped, confused, and really not knowing what to do. So it should like almost be instant guys to either just cone immediately or to replace your opponent's stairs with a cone by shooting it out after you take their wall. But another thing that you can do is place them from a further distance than most players think. All right, so we're gonna talk more about this later, but in box fights, you can combo this strength with blueprint edits. Okay, so blueprint edits are when you edit in build mode rather than just with the weapon out, which allows you to edit builds from further away. Benji Fishy does it here in this clip. You guys gotta check this out. All right, so you can see, you know, he's in a full, you know, box away when he replaces the ramp. And he gives him an enormous opportunity to land some shots. Most of you guys probably won't even be like in sweaty box fights like this, but if you ever are, just know that you can utilize blueprint edits and cones together to more safely peace control your opponents. Here we go. So yeah, like cones are beyond essential to place inside your opponent's box. But another way that you can absolutely, like what you need to really start using guys is to block your opponent from going up. So cone blocks, I mean, they're pretty simple. Basically like cones have an extended range of about one and a half tiles in any direction. So they can be placed from surprisingly far away, making them just so useful at just stopping players dead in their tracks. But you gotta check this out. Let's look at more intricate versions, all right? And this one from BH7, the enemy is just ramping up right behind his wall. So Seven quickly edits a window and he blocks them off with a cone. He then side jumps, he lands a nice shot, and he follows up by editing the safe corner of his wall to fully box in the enemy. This is why peace control is just so important. Like if the enemy here is boxed up faster or even coned ahead, Seven wouldn't have been able to just trap him. So a lot of peace control is really reacting, guys. But sometimes you have to have, you know, you know, to place bills in advance in anticipation of where your opponent might move. For example, all right, Clicks does it to perfection in this clip here using walls and cones. All right, so first things first, all right, he notices that his opponent pretty much has no, you know, other way to go than to the left. So when Clicks drops, he places not only a cone at his feet, but two extra cones to his left and a wall to boot. 
And as predicted, Clix's opponent ends up right on top of his cone. The next logical move for them is to really jump up. But of course, Clix is several steps ahead. So he edits for a cone block and he gets the kill because he did the right thing and he really placed those builds. So preemptive builds, guys, are essentially a huge aspect of peace control. You know, if you can predict where your enemy is going and place the right builds in advance, you stand to gain really a game-changing advantage. So from now on, guys, don't be afraid to place an extra cone in a wall next to your opponent's box, just in case they edit out that way. All right, bunch of crunch army. Lastly, when most of us think about peace control, we probably think about boxing opponents, which, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, pros do it all the time, and it seems to be like the go-to method when it comes to finishing kills in a heartbeat. And even though it seems like intimidating to do, boxing opponents isn't as challenging as you might think. So don't worry about it. You know, you're not gonna break your thumbs or, you know, or anything like that. So for the most part, all you really need to do is really comb the bottom, the top, and really just swing your crosshair to attach walls in at least a few directions, preferably all. But okay, don't waste your time just trying to get every wall off, all right? All right, pro tip though, practice your crosshair placement in creative. Too many players drag their crosshair like way further than they actually need to. Aiming around center height is good enough for you just to get both the bottom and top you know, off with surprisingly low crosshair movement. And you know, if you have fast crosshair movement, man, you can just get away with poor placement but it's still a really good idea to keep your crosshair movement as short as possible. And the best way to learn is really to just practice. All right, guys, Raiders Peace Control Map is one of our recent favorites for this, but we also highly recommend hitting up some 1v1s, either with a friend, you know, who can just challenge you, or just, you know, through the practice maps and creative. All right, guys, bunch of crunch on me. Hope you guys enjoyed the nine peace control techniques to be useful, you know, in one way or another. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this with all your friends, man. We got so much great content coming out on this channel. Once again, it's your guy. I'll see you soon. Peace.